All right, so last time we started talking about this integral method um, and we went, let's see, we started going through this example, right? What, what, if you remember what we're doing here in the integral method is we're assuming a functional form, right? We're assuming that the velocity profile is described by the equation that we give it. And then we go through and impose conditions to make sure that certain things about that velocity profile match reality, so no slip. Um, free stream velocity is equal to the velocity in the edge of the boundary layer, et cetera. Uh, and then we, uh, the goal is to come up with an ODE, which we haven't done yet, right? We've only gotten as far as our, our velocity solution. We want to get to an ODE that we can solve for the boundary layer thickness. Okay, then we can use that thickness to calculate other things we care about. So this is where we were. I just uh, threw up the example. So we went through, uh, assumed our functional form, uh, threw away some terms that we didn't think we needed um, for this really simple problem, and then came up with ultimately our, our boundary layer velocity profile, which is, which is right here, right? This, this is our boundary layer velocity profile. Again, the, the function is something we gave it, and then we're imposing things to get to this. So then the question is, you know, what do we do next? Like, where do, how do we actually use this? Um, well, before we get there, actually, we made an assumption about the number of coefficients in the form of this equation to be a polynomial. So it was a second order polynomial. That gave us three unknown coefficients. That meant, and I wasn't clear about this last time, that meant we could do kind of three things. We could enforce three conditions to solve for each of those unknown coefficients. Those were no slip, uh, velocity at the edge of the boundary layer. And then I think, what was the third one? Recovering the shear stress or something like that. Uh, yeah, so we were saying that this is not a shear driven flow. So we have our shear stress at the edge of the boundary layer is equal to zero. So those are the three things um, that we decided to do. We couldn't actually get to the fourth thing. Right? We, had, we had listed, if I go back up, we had listed four things that we'd like to do. And actually you could continue to list other things you'd like to do. Maybe you want the derivative uh, in the middle of the boundary layer to be a certain value or let's say you want to enforce this X momentum at places other than Y equals zero. You can continue to do that if you add, if you add polynomial terms. We just decided, you know, let's do a third order or a second order polynomial. We can do three things. If we decided we wanted to do a different polynomial, uh, there's a nice table here in the book that gives you the solution, what we just went through. So if you look here, we have, uh, this was the one we assumed here, the second order polynomial. Right, and it kind of looks like what we said. We said u over u infinity. This is the solution we came up with. This stuff over here is stuff that would have appeared if we didn't throw away terms. Right? This would be the solution that would be applicable if, if we had, say, um, uh, transpiration across the boundary, like a mass flux across the boundary or some other things that we, we said that we didn't have. Okay, so that's, that's uh, the general form. And then over here, we'll find that the shear stress is given by this equation. So this is a momentum uh, considerations table. So our shear stress equation is going to be two mu u infinity over delta m minus the shear stress at the edge of the boundary layer, which for us is gonna be zero. So we should find if we went through and applied our solution that this would be our shear stress equation here. Okay, we can go through and so third order you can see yeah, there's a lot more going on, but it's just a polynomial and it's, there's nothing really magic about it. It's just that there's more things to, more terms to worry about. So um, you can kind of shortcut to that in the future if, if you know you're gonna use one of these forms of the equation. So let's look a little bit at what our velocity solution looks like um, compared to something that we think is pretty accurate. So we have the, the Blasius solution for the momentum boundary layer that is, the solution using the self-similar approach, right? Where we say, uh, where, where the problem is solved in terms of a single variable Y over Delta uh, and you get a single profile. So it's still an approximation, but it's a, a pretty accurate solution, well accepted. So that's our black dotted line there. And you can see if we would have chosen, uh, let's see a first order polynomial, that would be this guy here. So you can see, yeah, it makes, it makes sense. You have as a function of your dimensionless position here, Y over, that's supposed to be delta m. Y over delta m, you can see it's linear. Right? So we have a linear, that's what, what we assumed it to be, a linear velocity profile. So that's what it looks like. Well, there's error involved in that. So at any, at any point here, you might have a, a, 
a disagreement between your model and what the accurate solution would be. As you get you know, more and more terms, you're gonna get closer to the actual solution. So in many cases, you might find a linear approximation is okay, um, but you can kind of go through it that way. Uh, okay, so let's take this example and continue on a little bit. Um, let's see, catch up on my notes here. Okay, so we are, uh, where did this go? I okay, moved my notes out of order a little bit. Sorry about that. Delta T. Okay. So we need to uh, get to the point here where we can actually do something with this, with our velocity uh, profile, and get some interesting quantities out of it. So we're are start, we're starting here with the momentum consideration. So the first thing we're going to want to do is come up with like a shear stress, uh, or a friction coefficient, or something like that. So let's, let's go through and use our velocity distribution here. Right? This is our equation that we had. And now this is the simplified form of that integral solution that we started with. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna take this thing and figure out how to apply it in this situation. So to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute in places where we see u, right? This is gonna become uh, u is equal to uh, two, times y over delta m minus y over delta m squared, that whole thing multiplied by u infinity, right? That's just a solution for u. So we're gonna substitute that in. Anytime we see u here, right? That's easy, that's straightforward. But we, that, that's not all, right? We have this here. We have, sorry, it's really hard to see. We have tau s appearing. Tau s is dependent on our function, our, our assumed velocity profile. Right, tau s is not just something that's independent of the velocity profile, it depends on our solution. So we actually have to first, before we can just substitute in u, we have to figure out how we can deal with this tau s. So let's start by, uh, let's do the, uh, first the definition of tau, right, so tau s. Tau s's definition was mu times uh, partial u with respect to y, evaluated at y equals zero, right, that's the definition. So we can use this. We have our velocity profile for u. We just substitute that in. So that's going to be mu is equal to the partial, or sorry, mu, mu times the partial with respect to y of our velocity profile, which is, let's see, 2y over delta m minus y over delta m squared uh, times u infinity. So all of that, let's draw this in here, times u infinity, all that inside the derivative, all that evaluated at y equals zero. That's our shear stress. Uh, so let's see, we know that u infinity is constant, so that's not changing, that can come out of the derivative. And then we just have to take the derivative with respect to y, which is a pretty straightforward thing for this one. Um, if we do that, uh, and then evaluate it at y equals zero, we end up with uh, tau s is equal to, uh, let's see, so tau s is equal to mu times u infinity times uh, two over delta m minus two times y over delta m squared uh, at y equals zero. So this is tau s is equal to two times mu times u infinity over delta m, right? So let's check our table there. Copy that, two mu u infinity over delta m. So if we look back up here, Sure enough, tau s, two mu, u infinity over delta m, and then that minus y, uh, tau y equals delta m, that goes away, right? Because we, there's, that component's not part of our problem here. All right, so we have our shear stress now. We can go through and uh, substitute that back into our equation up here, and then we can substitute uh, our u velocity profile in as well. So let's do that. So we end up with our new form of our uh, integral solution is d, dx, uh, let's see. So we're gonna take the integral from y equals zero to uh, y equals delta m. And then we have all this stuff that we're integrating. Uh, so let's see, it's gonna be two brackets. So two y over delta m minus y over delta m squared. Uh, and that whole thing squared, right? That's u squared appearing first. 
And we have to, can't forget about U infinity squared multiplying that. So that's our first substitution of velocity into that equation uh, up on top. So then the second part is, let's see, two Y over Delta M minus Y over Delta M squared. Uh, all of that times U infinity squared, right? And it's squared because we have U infinity appearing in our U distribution and then it's U times U infinity on that second term, right? Uh, Okay, and then, so that integral is all with respect to dy, right? That's the full integral there, all that with respect to dy. And we are taking d dx of that. So that's that last bracket. And then that's equal to our shear stress, which is minus, uh, right? Because it was minus, so minus tau s, which is minus two mu u infinity over rho delta m. Okay, any questions on this so far? Looks good. Okay, so now we just have to go through and evaluate this integral, right? We, we have integral from y equals zero to delta m, and that's just a polynomial in, in y, right? You could go through, you could do it by hand really easily. You could go through, multiply the terms out, do each of the integrals. Um, rather than sitting here and watching you write for a while, I'll just give you the result of that, which is, uh, let's see d dx, of, so the integral result is minus 2 fifteenths delta m u infinity squared is equal to 2 times mu times u infinity over rho delta m, sorry, negative 2, right? negative 2 mu u infinity over. So this is the result, minus 2 over 15. It's just the evaluation of that definite integral. Okay. We, we now have an ODE, right? We have an ODE, DDX is some function is equal to something on the right-hand side. Well, what's our, what's our independent variable in this ODE? What's changing as a function of X? Yep, delta M, boundary layer thickness. So this is now an ODE with, in, in terms of delta M, yeah. Um, why would, what do you mean? So like over, over here? Um, so I think our velocity solution did not depend on rho, right? If you look, if you look up here, this is, so this here is our simplified equation from before. And then our velocity solution here doesn't have rho appearing in it. So de or density is not changing as a function of X either, right? Maybe I'm missing your question. Oh, okay. So rho appeared here because our solution here says minus tau S over rho, right? And that came from, if I scroll back up here, where was that? Um, oh, it's on, yeah, right here. This is because this general form of the equation has one over rho multiplying it. All right, so we have our ODE, right? And our ODE is a pretty easy ODE to solve. U infinity is not changing as a function of position. The only thing that's changing is delta M. So we can go through and try to separate this and solve it. Um, so let's, on the next one, do it. Here's what we just came up with. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's simplify this out. So what, let's see, minus two fifteenths uh, U infinity squared, that can come out, right? Those are all constants. Um, that's then multiplying d delta m dx. And then that's equal to what's on the right-hand side, two minus two mu u infinity over rho, uh, sorry, rho delta m. Okay, separable. Again, so we can get all the delta stuff on one side, all the x on the other side. So we do that and it looks like what? Delta m uh, times d delta m is equal to uh, 15 mu over rho u infinity times dx. Easy, okay, then we integrate. So we're gonna integrate both sides. The question is, um, we're integrating the, both sides, but this is actually integrated within a specific region. This isn't an indefinite integral, it's a definite integral. 
because we're integrating within a specific region, and that region is delta M is going to be from zero to uh, delta M, right, to the edge of that boundary layer. And then X is going to be from zero to X, right, the position X. Um, and note that because delta M is zero, at X equals zero, we don't have to have a constant of integration right there. Right? Sort of takes care of it. Um, so let's solve this. This is then what delta M squared over two is equal to 15 mu over rho u infinity times X. Okay, now we can solve this for delta M. So delta M becomes, uh, let's see, square root of 30 times mu over rho u infinity times x, so x is within the square root. And we've just come up with an expression based on our velocity distribution for the boundary layer thickness as a function of position x, okay? This is, um, yeah, it's pretty, you know, once, once you kind of see how it works out, it's, it's pretty straightforward. But this looks a lot like some things we've seen before in terms of boundary layer thickness. So let's go through and actually compare this to something where we know the solution and see how accurate is this approach for this specific problem where we know that there's an exact solution. We can go through and compare it. So let's compare it using, uh, let's see, friction coefficient. First, let's uh, use our definition tau s again. So tau s we said was, uh, after solving for it, we said it was two mu u infinity over delta m. Um, so using now our, our new function for delta m, we're gonna substitute that in here. And that's gonna give us tau s is equal to two mu u infinity times the square root of rho u infinity over 30, sorry, 30 mu times x, because delta m is in the denominator there. So it's the inverse. Uh, taking this a step further, we have tau s is see, square root of, uh, let's see here. We're going to bring the two inside. Uh, we're going to bring mu and u infinity inside. So, oops, what just happened? Uh, so that we can kind of make it look like some of the things we've seen before. So that becomes four mu rho times u infinity, u infinity. Uh, to the third power, because we brought it inside, divided by 30 times x. Um, okay, so then to compare this, let's, let's compare this with a friction coefficient. So friction coefficient Cf is going to be uh, two tau s over rho u infinity squared. Right? That's just sort of the definition of it. And then substituting this in, we get Cf is equal to two over rho u infinity squared, times the square root of four mu rho u infinity cubed over 30 X. Um, this can simplify. So this, uh, again, bringing stuff inside, CF then is let's see, almost there. So 16 mu over 30 rho X u infinity. Uh, and so then we can evaluate this stuff and actually look what we have here. We have Reynolds number, one over Reynolds number. So then we can simplify this and this becomes C F is equal to, oh, well, 16 over 30 is 0 0.73 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number, C F. This should look like something we just did, right? This looks really similar. This is really similar to the Blasius solution, and that is uh, CF uh, for the Blasius solution is 0 0.664 divided by the square root of Reynolds. So we're comparing these, these two things. So our assumption of a, a second order polynomial for the velocity profile gets us within 10%, right? 10% accuracy of an exact solution. For a lot of things, that's gonna be great. Like that's, that's good enough to make decisions, right? Um, if, by the way, if we would have, <clears throat> so this is within 10%, if we would have done first order in a linear solution, so let's see, first order, first order would be 15% error about, uh, third order is about 2.5. Uh, 
0.5%. So if you wanted to go through the trouble of having a cubic polynomial as your solution and go through that, you'd get better accuracy, but um, comes at the expense of being slightly more annoying. 